So anyway, what is the mechanism of successful cancer treatment? As I mentioned, there are from 40 to 650 abnormal mutated genes in the single cancer case, which are uh, continuously changing and increasing in numbers. Single genes may have multiple mutations. The number of possible mutations in cancer is estimated at 30 million, so a mind-boggling number. Well, uh, these genes which are mutated, they enslave thousands of normal genes and form a network, form the program in the body, the software which is instructing the body how to make cancer. Only in some cases, a single medication can eradicate these genes and cure the disease because this is such a complex problem. With antineoplastins, we are able to accomplish this in certain percentage of patients because antineoplastins are working on 100 most common mutated genes. This is a formidable task, of course, to accomplish, but since our research on antineoplastins was proved to be successful in clinical trials, the other pharmaceutical companies developed a number of different medications which work on the genes, usually on single genes, about one, over 130 different medications, which are now prescription medications. Then, of course, using antineoplasma, which cover 100 genes, and perhaps adding some other gene-targeted medications for the genes which are not covered by antineoplasms can solve the problem, and that's what we do. Well, so we have to compare now what is the basis of standard cancer treatment. For over 170 years, the treatment of cancer was based on microscopic diagnosis. In 1845, prominent doctor Rudolf Virchow, who was my countryman, introduced the principles of microscopic diagnosis of cancer. And since then, suddenly there were various microscopic techniques which are much superior, but the bottom line is the same. Look at the microscope from slices from tumor, determine the name of the cancer, treat everybody the same. <laughs> Which obviously did not work because everybody is different. What is the basis of revolutionary change in cancer treatment? Well, uh, what means we have to find out what is causing the problem if you would like to solve the problem. If you would like to fix the car, uh, you are not going to call Washington DC and ask, well, my car is not working, what should I do? And they say, well, the standards for fixing the car are these three points, try it, okay? But <laughs> it's not going to work, okay? You need to find out what is causing the problem. Not a new idea. It was introduced about 2,300 years ago by great philosopher Aristotle, whose father was a prominent doctor. He was saying, find what is causing the problem and treat the problem, okay? This idea is supported now by some prominent minds in medicine. One of them is Francis Collin. Dr. Francis Collin is the director of the National Institute of Health. And what he was saying just six years ago is that in the, next, in the near future, our way to diagnose cancer based on pathology diagnosis will be good for nothing. It doesn't, it's not so important if this is breast, lung, or prostate cancer. What is important is what is causing this, which genes are causing this, and then we should treat the genes. Well, that's what you are doing, okay? So this is now called precision cancer treatment because uh, the chances for response are more precisely determined than in the standard treatment. And what is involved in this? Well, the identification of genes involving cancer individual patients. The treatment with gene-targeted medications that selectively kill cancer cells which contain abnormal genes. And it resembles in a certain way the treatment of infectious diseases. When penicillin was introduced as the first antibiotics and then septomycin, well, what doctors were treating, infection of the lung, infection of the kidney, infection of the skin, but finally they got the idea, well, <laughs> It doesn't work this way. Let's find out what are the germs which are causing the infection and then select the right antibiotic. And then they were able to save lives. Before, people were dying from pneumonia. Now, it's not so common. People can live <laughs> after pneumonia is still successful with antibiotics. The problem is that in the infection, you may have just three types of germs and you use combination of three antibiotics and the problem is over. In cancer, you are dealing with 
from 40 to 650 abnormal genes. And this is just the tip of the iceberg because this is even much more complicated. So you really need to cover in your treatment large number of genes. So basically, this would not be possible without using antineoplastins. They cover 100 common cancer genes. It is possible to find out what are these mutated genes by the tests which are covered by insurance and for people in the United States, they don't need to pay for it. And then we can select additional medications, if necessary, together with antineoplastins and lead the treatment to cancer cure, not palliative treatment, which will work for a while and the patient will die a little later than without the treatment or sometime sooner. This is the curative treatment, which can get rid of cancer. And that's what you like to do. So uh, we have to realize that cancer is the disease in info of information processing. Genetic information is segregated in approximately 23,000 genes. Genes process information through signaling pathways. In reality, this is a much more complex system. But anyway, I don't, we don't have time to elaborate this. This system operates like a quantum computer, which now is quite popular because, uh, well, the United States now uh, in the <laughs> competition with China, who will first get quantum computers, which will be a million times more proficient than current computers. But in our body, we are dealing with quantum computer. Abnormal genes form a very complex signaling network, and this is cancer genome, which exists parallel to our normal genome. This cancer genome needs to be destroyed, because if it's not destroyed, the cancer will always come back, because we have a program in our body how to make cancer cells. Surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy are not able to do it. And this is a cyber war which needs a completely different approach. It can be conquered by using antioplastins in combination with gene-targeted therapy and immunotherapy.